Welcome back to another video. Of course, my name is Gareth from Park Cameras, as it always is. And today, much like every other Tuesday, we're going to be doing a tutorial. This time it's Capture One. We're going to talk about the new stuff, one of the new things in particular, which I think is super cool. But before that, it's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. And this week, of course, is no different. It is Tuesday once again. And this week, we're diving into Capture One. We're going to look at one of the cool new things that I think is really sweet, actually, but one of the new things in the latest update to Capture One. So we're in Capture One 21, it's version 14.1, and we're going to be looking at this style brushes. This is a new thing that's been added in. I think they're really cool. There's a lot of things you can do. It makes editing your photo so much easier and quicker because they're right there. It's all set up. Let's dive in. I've got a few different photos, so I want to show you a few different things that we can do with the style brushes. So first things first, where are the style brushes? Well, I've got this open here with my different photos. I'm just in the exposure tab here and just below the layers here, where you would have your white balance, your exposure, high down your range, all that kind of stuff. We've got our style brushes just here. If you click the drop down arrow, it's gonna load up built-in style brushes. You can click that and there's a bunch of different ones. We've got them listed into color, enhancements, and light and contrast. Now we're not gonna go through every single one. That'd be crazy and this would be a really, really long video. But what we are gonna do is pick out a few which I think are really cool. Some of these are super self-explanatory. For example, in the color, we've got balance cool and balance warm. Essentially, you're painting on warmer tones or cooler tones. You've got saturation minus and plus. I think it speaks for itself. What I wanna talk about a little bit more is the enhancements, where I think there's some really interesting stuff, and a little bit in the light and contrast, where I think there's some interesting stuff as well. Let's start off with the enhancements. I've brought up this photo deliberately. I wanna come here to Iris Enhance. Now this obviously, it's fairly self-explanatory as well, but it's gonna really bring out the eyes. It's gonna make them pop. So let's go ahead and click Iris Enhance here. Now you can see that once you click it, a little tick appears next to it. Now, you don't have to create a new layer for this. It will actually create one for you once you start painting onto your photo. So we've got that tick so you know exactly what you're doing. We can come over here to the photo, right click, just bring the size of this brush up a little bit. And you can see we're still on the background layer, but once I start painting onto specifically the iris here, you can see we've got a new layer that's been added, iris enhanced. Now this works exactly like all the other layers. It still allows you to control things like the opacity. It still allows you to go in and edit other things. You know, we can still add some exposure to this or highlights or do whatever we want as well, but it has automatically created this layer and it has named it for us so we know exactly what's going on and I can come in here and just paint over the other iris. And if we look at that, if I turn it off and then turn it back on, it's quite a serious difference that it's made there, actually. You know, it's not even just a subtle difference. It's quite a, quite a significant difference. It's really made those eyes pop. It's adding a bit of contrast. It's adding a bit of clarity. It might be adding a bit of saturation to the, to the actual colors. I'm not 100% sure, but it's really making a big difference. Now, of course, we can come up, we can adjust the opacity if we think it's too much. We can bring that down. We can bring that down quite a lot if we wanted to. If we just think that it's, it's too much. I quite like it at 100, but it works like any other layer. Let's go on to add detail. So if I click this now, we've got a little tick there. You'll notice we're on the RS Enhanced layer. But as soon as I come over here, I'm going to just adjust the size. So you can right click and just adjust the size there. Start painting onto her skin here. A new layer has been created again, add detail. And I'm just going to paint along the skin just to bring out a little bit of the detail in the skin. This one's much, much more subtle and it might work better for landscapes or in situations like this where I just want to bring out, you know, the skin was very sort of uh, blurred. I want to bring out a little bit more detail. Let's go ahead and tick that off. And you can see it does bring out a little bit more detail in the skin there. We've got a bit more clarity. Yeah, and it seems like it's brightened it a little bit. That's gonna work for all kinds of things, but I thought it was important to show that it's gonna make another new layer. So you can adjust the opacity again, turn it off and on, all kinds of things. Let's move over to another photo, this one here, where I wanna show you the deep sky enhancement. So let's click on that. You can see it once again, we're on the background layer. I wanna just right click, bring my brush size up, 
and I'm just going to paint across the sky. Now this gives us a bit more contrast in the sky, a bit more clarity in the sky. You can see it's brought out the clouds and things like that there. Now this isn't, there's not a huge amount going on with this sky, but it has made a bit of a difference here. And if I turn that back off, you can see it's kind of dehazed it a little bit, but in a way that doesn't look kind of awful, which dehaze, if you go too mad, can look a little bit awful. So I really like this deep sky thing. I think it works on all kinds of different landscapes. And then in addition to that, we've got this soft flares. Let's click that again. The tick goes on there. Let's just bring this in from the top right. I'm just brushing it in kind of as circles. And then if you look at that, it's kind of almost as if there's light coming in from that top right corner. So a bit like a flare, hence why it's called soft flare. And I like to use this to kind of simulate sunlight. We can then, with this new layer, soft flare, we can then close the style brushes and in white balance, we could even warm that up a little bit. So that's just gonna be warming up this layer and it's gonna be warming up the flare we've just popped on there. We could even bring the exposure up a little bit as well. And then if you think it's too much of, a, of a, an effect, we can just bring the opacity of that layer down until it hits somewhere that you're kind of happier with. Really, really handy. And look how quick some of this stuff is now to just do for these photos, whether it's the eyes, the detail, the, the flare like this, the sky. It's a huge thing to be able to work this quickly. Let's go into another photo. Let's go into this one here. And I want to show you what I think about the light and the contrast settings here. So we've got various things that we can do in light and contrast. You know, we can add contrast, reduce it, brightness, you know, haze, highlight, shadows, that kind of stuff, right? That's pretty self-explanatory. It's useful to have because it means you don't have to create a new layer and then find the things you want to adjust and then paint it on and adjust it again and go forward. You can do it very quickly. You can change the shadows, change the highlights in certain areas very, very fast. You know, haze as well. I think that's really handy. But what I want to talk about is the dodge and burn part of the light and contrast settings within the built-in style brushes, because that's a really useful thing. It really speeds up doing any dodging and burning. If you're not familiar with dodging and burning, we've actually got videos about it already to do in, in Photoshop and things like that. But here, this is probably the easiest kind of dodging and burning. And essentially, it's going to allow you to shape the light a little bit when it comes to the highlights and the shadows. So dark in certain areas, light in certain other areas to just shape the light in this situation on our subject. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click dodge, which is gonna be the brighten part of it. Again, the tick is right there. No new uh, layer, but it will create one for us. Let's bring that down a little bit in size. Let's just paint this on on the side of her face here that we want to brighten up. Let's paint it on over her hair as well, which I think is gonna, is gonna work. And the thing I always find with dodging and burning, no matter where you're doing it, it always feels like you haven't done that much. And then you go and you turn off the layer and you turn it back on and you realize, oh, oh no, I have, I've done quite a lot. <laughs> and you might even want to turn it down after the fact. But first of all, let's come here to burn, which is darken. And this is a very simplistic dodge and burn that I'm doing here. If you want to see uh, a more expansive tutorial all about dodging and burning, let me know down in the comments because to be honest, I'd love to make it. Maybe I'll make it anyway, who knows? But if you let me know down in the comments, if you want to see it, I'll almost definitely make it. So that would be great. Let's go on burn. That's going to create a new layer once we start painting on. Let's just reduce the size of this brush a little bit. I'm going to darken over here. What I want to do essentially is create a slightly more dramatic feel with the lighting here. So let's just continue painting on dark a bit there darker over here. Let's paint some darkness into the hair to kind of offset the lighter part. I think that looks pretty cool. Like I say, it's a pretty simplistic one. You know, this isn't where I would leave the finished image, but if I turn that off and then turn that back on, you can see we've made a huge difference, probably way too much of a difference to be honest. But that's the great thing about Capture One. We can then just bring that opacity down. Let's go back into the dodge. Just paint that here just to kind of brighten this bit up. Now, sometimes it's useful to see a before and after, especially when you're doing dodging and burning of both the dodging and the burning rather than just one at a time. So we can come up here to the top right. We can click on before and after and just drag that. That was before we did any. And then this is after. So, you know, it makes a 
big difference. Is that the best dodging and burning I've ever done? It's not. If I'm honest with you, it's not even close. <laughs> but it does give you an idea of how this works and how easy this is to now use in Capture One. You know, I think that's the biggest part of this is that this just speeds up workflow and anything that does that is a massive plus. This just is another thing now where I wouldn't have to go into Photoshop to do various things. I wouldn't have to bring this across, which is making Capture One such an all-in-one inclusive thing. You know, the layers are, are such a big deal in Capture One, but now having these things in here, super, super useful. I'm a big fan. I'm a really big fan, and I think it just keeps getting better and better. If you wanna actually see Capture One for yourself, there's a link down in the description, so you can go and check it out for yourself. There's various different versions of it, and they're all down there, so you can go and check it out. Of course, if you have any questions as well, pop them down in the comments, because I'd love to hear anything you think about all of this, anything you wanna see in a future Tutorial Tuesday. Do you like Capture One? I love Capture One. What do you use, though? I'd love to hear about all of it. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well, if you enjoyed the video, because that absolutely helps us out, and we've got new tutorials every week, new reviews of, of all kinds of equipment, all kinds of fun stuff. I will see you in the next video, and as always, thanks for watching.